from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I came for the beer and the bitches. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. It's Friday, wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes, anything at all. Can you talk about anything that's on your mind? At 1-800-5800-TOM, it's 1-800-5800-866. We're plowing through these calls. Mike, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, hey, Tom, how you doing? How you doing? I'm all right, I'm all right, Tom. I got a little bit of a dilemma here. Um, let me see, How? where do I start? Well, basically, you know how we're in this recession. I, I do real estate, and... um. I was kind of seeing this girl, right, this chick, and, and she has a, a job with this investor. So basically, being that we're in a recession and I'm not able to, you know, the real estate market slowed down, I got a good opportunity with her, and it's making me about a little over 100000 a year plus. But what's happening is, you know, we started off as friends and started banging her, and now it's like she's pushing towards a relationship thing, and I'm not ready for that, Tom, so I, I don't know what to do. I don't well. want to jeopardize what I got going on. You can't have both. What's that? You cannot have both. I cannot have both. I know. No. So, so. I mean, if uh, she wants a relationship, you have to make a decision now. Do you want to continue getting the benefits you're getting, or do you want to toss her overboard? Well, I mean, it, the relationship topic really doesn't come up, but, you know, she's starting to want to hang out every day and, and on the weekends, and, and, and I'm, I just don't want to jeopardize. I mean, well, you just have to find ways to ice her. You'd have to tell her you have family commitments. You have to tell her you've got work to do. Okay. Tell her you work a second job. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't It's like we're, we're in contact all the time, so it's hard for me to kind of say that I work a second job. I don't All think right, I, then I, tell her, tell her your, uh, your family is sick. Does she know your family? Uh, no, 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 no. Great. So, uh, you know, you've got a sibling who's sick or your mom is sick or something. You do whatever you have to do. I just don't want to jeopardize the, what I got right there, Tom. I mean, I don't want to... Mike, tell yeah, to Mike I'm telling you, this, this is, even this is kind of a risky move, but I mean, what choice do you have? Yeah... Because, you know, it started off just, you know, banging here and there. And now it's like, let's take trips. Yeah, but let's chicks, do this and... chicks generally bring emotion into it. Yeah. That's the danger of banging a chick to get something in return. So I'm thinking of maybe telling her, hey, why don't we just keep it business? But why do you think that's going to pan out? You mean can I keep it business and no, don't bang her anymore? Well, yeah. I mean, because... By banging her, it's just getting more. Well, and more well you mean, look at it from her towards... point of view. Do you know why she's giving you uh, these connections? It's because she thinks you're her next boyfriend. I think you're right, and that's what I'm afraid of. She thinks that she's going to benefit from this down the line. So, and that's what worries me. What if I tell her? What if I tell her, like, let's keep it business? I wouldn't do if... that. I would keep banging her. I would just say. Oh, my mama's sick. Oh, she's in the hospital. Oh, my aunt is sick. Well, whatever you have to say. Right. I mean, but how long, you know, can I keep those, uh, keep that Well, uh, yeah, how long, what do you have? How long do you need these connections? For the rest of your life? Well, you're right. No, no, no. Not for the rest of my life. Not how long do you need two, them? Maybe? A year or two. Okay, fine. So you ice her on the weekends and you ice her at night or whatever, and you just say, hey, I'm sorry, I've got family commitments. I'm a family guy. I'm a family guy. By the way, most women like guys who are family guys. Well, that's just that don't... might be a bad thing. I want her to like me more. <laughs> yeah, but wait a minute. You want her to keep giving you what she's giving you. Yeah. And, and, and this was, she wants more time with you. But if you yeah. tell her the reason you can't spend more time with her is because you're a family guy, that could keep the gravy train coming. Okay. So it's kind of like a fine line. I just got to walk the edge kind of not too much. Right. Not, you know. And you may not get what you want, too. You may lose it. May lose it. Okay. You may lose it. It's You know, women's emotions get involved. This is always risky, what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Right. That, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, because I, I basically right now I'm in the point where I only have my freedom, Tom, and I, I, I want to go out and meet other chicks and start banging them. But this girl is just always around, and it just 
it's hard, you know, and I don't want to jeopardize what I got going as far as the income. So I'm, I'm, I'm like sacrificing and living this life, but I'm not happy. Well, I have, uh, well, you can stop and you can work harder and make your own money. Well, that is true. That's true too. But it's so easy, Tom. Well, it's not so easy because this is part of it. Well, you're right. Yeah, you're right. So, what would you uh, recommend? Should I should I cut it completely and do my own thing, or, or should I uh, keep you know, like you said, I, right I would first and... try. I would first try some lame excuse. Okay. For why you can't see her and see her when you can, quote unquote. Right. And if that doesn't work, then, then go off and do your own thing. Right. Okay. Yeah, I was I was actually trying to take the route too before where I would like, you know, treat her mean and I like cut her off and just push her to the side. But it, it, it they like that. I don't know why they like it. Well, they I understand that, more. but again, you know, you're you're asking for the impossible. Okay. Okay. So I guess I just got to make a decision to, uh, if I'm going to play the game, I just got to... You're going to play the game and try to minimize your uh, uh, commitments by saying okay. that you have family commitments and therefore you don't have all the time she'd like you to have. All right. And see if that works. And if it doesn't work, move on. Thank you. Speaking of moving on, Natasha on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Papa Tom. Hello, and hello Natasha. To all my fellow listeners. There we go. That's right. Okay, Tom. My question: When? See, this is obviously it's going to hit close to home. What I'm about to tell you, but I basically want to know when a man has a woman already in bed, and you're intimate with somebody, yet all these compliments start pouring out, and nice gestures and these compliments they just keep going and they're so detailed is it believable when the person has not been with the opposite ethnicity do you believe or is it just bs is it a smooth talker what is your ethnicity i'm american of mexican descent tom and what is he japanese italian okay so you're telling me he's never been with a Mexican-American, never been with an American, never been with what? Hispanic girl. All right. Look, anytime a man is complimenting you and you've already had sex with him, you can pretty much believe that he's in love with you because guys usually do that before they get you into bed, not after. No, it was before, during, and after. Well, then, then the guy probably really likes you. Yeah, that's possible, too. You're right. Yeah, I think it's likely. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, just the, just the detail, because I've had, you know, another partner this year, and this gentleman was extremely, extremely complimentative as well, but he he didn't throw out compliments just as much as this other gentleman, and it it was so, it was just a drastic change. It really was, and... I don't know. And the, another thing, your caller prior to... By the way, um, let me guess. So on some level, it's annoying you. It's like too much. It's it, it, That's why I question it. That's why I called, because... No, I was it's thinking, beyond questioning it. It's annoying. I, I was questioning it because I'm like, are you BSing me? Are you just a smooth talker or what? Are you why would he need me? to be a smooth talker? He already got what he wanted. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like that's so my point. That's why I'm saying truth. he's not a smooth talker because he already got what he wanted. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It wasn't prior. It was during. After you never see part. me complimenting any chicks after I already uh, saw them naked. Are you kidding me? That's what I was going to ask you too. And another thing, you know, I stay away from the guys. I remain on distant terms because I don't want to get so caught up in the feelings and catching feelings because it's easy for a man and woman to catch feelings regardless of, you know, our yeah, sex. It's like, it's like the flu, for God's sake. It, it is. So in order to protect myself and my partner's self, I'm going to stay away and limit the time and dedication and whatnot because in all honesty, all of these men and all men, even women, appreciate the distant behavior. We appreciate it. Well, it's not that we appreciate we it, love. but we, we want what we can't have. Exactly. <laughs> right. 
Exactly. So, but look at oh, this. A girl after my own, a girl talk- after my own heart. No, doesn't want the feelings. Just wants to get laid. But I love that. I, and I, you know what? All I want is to chill, hang out, and do our thing. That's it. That's all I want. And remain friends. That's it. You know, I don't want to see you every day. I don't want to talk to you every day. I don't need that. I have my life. I have my school. I have so much going on for myself that there's no reason for you know us to do that to each other. There's no reason. And every time I talk to you, Tom, I bump up a notch. So no longer am I a 10. I'm an LA 12. Look at you. <laughs> I learned from the best, baby. <laughs> I, I Now I have to see a photo of that. Every time I call you, you ask me, but I don't think I'll ever send one. I'm a beautiful girl, inside and out. How will I ever know? One day you might, but I, I'm not going to send you a picture. You put it on MySpace so all the listeners can see. I didn't you know? say you had to send a naked picture for no, God's no, sake. No, no, not naked. I would never do that, but, you know. I mean, I why would want I want to share, to for Christ's sake? You can just tell them. I don't want everyone if to If you see. were that hot, why would I put it online? I'd keep it to myself. All right, all right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. The, the ones, look at the ones I put up. Have you looked at MySpace? Have you seen my MySpace? I haven't seen it, Tom. I haven't Do been you, to your page. Right, go take a look. See if you see any hot chicks on there. Okay, I'm going to do that. Take a look at the kind of chicks I put up there. Okay. Now, these okay. are chicks I don't mind sharing with the world. <laughs> <laughs> But if you're that hot, why in the world would I share you with the rest of the world? <laughs> All right, Tom. I'm going to send you a picture. You can let your listeners know if I look good or not. I'll be looking for it. Bye, everybody, and have a good night. All right, Natasha. Thank you so much for the call. Tom Likers. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Friday, wide open telephones at 1-800-5800-TOM. Shorter commercial breaks means more phone calls, means better chance to get in. So start dialing. 1-800-5800-TOM. Don't forget the Saturday edition of the Tom Likas Show. Tomorrow from 2 until 6 p.m. On 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. And uh, if you don't live in SoCal, you can hear it by getting online at blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button and there you will be. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Andrew on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going? Great. I got a bailout program for our automakers. Every every automobile, every engine that we have runs on gas. Why don't we have our oil manufacturers bail them out? Why should they a, do that? Why not? They stop because manufacturing, they stop manufacturing vehicles that take gas and come up with an alternative means. They'll figure something out. Well, do you have any evidence that the oil companies are responsible for that? Well, no, but it sounds like a perfect solution. Why not? Well, they have record sounds... sales. We go from five dollars a gallon back to a dollar sixty nine a gallon. Something's wrong. No, uh, some of the things that are wrong include the fact that the dollar uh, had declined in value and recently has strengthened in value. Yeah. And when the dollar strengthens in value, the price of gasoline goes down. It, it, it another reason like is another reason is because Americans are driving billions less miles every month. Demand is down. Yeah. So when demand goes down, the price goes down. Makes sense. And the result is that the oil companies are not going to have record profits next quarter. Not uh, next quarter, no. Who knows? And Who knows probably not for the year, next. Though. Probably next. Not for the next several. Yeah. I heard today one prediction that oil is going back to thirty dollars a barrel. <laughs> Perfect. Thirty dollars a barrel. So. Uh, you know, I don't think the oil companies are going to have all this money to be throwing at the car companies. No, not not in recent months or not in future months or not. Nope. So, thanks, Tom. Take me out old school. Okay, here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Here comes Aaron on the Tom Likas show. What's up, Tom? Not much. I know. 
Hey, I just wanted to comment on what these people are saying about the uh, the economy. And everybody's uh, whining and complaining about the economy this and the economy that. Yeah. But what the news isn't telling you, that there's actually a lot of people out there that that so-called economy's not hurting anybody. But they don't want to put that on the news. They, You know, the, your one caller told you to put a cup and uh, and start saving money and doing this. Well, that's not how to what to do it. And if if we're in a down economy, you want to expand because everything right now is inexpensive. If yes, at- I mean uh, whatever you need, it's out there on sale. And there is a car dealer in Davie, Florida, offering two cars for the price of one. Right, right, and and right right now I'm actually I'm in the car business too, and the economy. The only thing it's affected is I've had to work a little harder, but the money is still exactly the same. Um, I've I've never been afraid of hard work. I have never been afraid of change. And, uh, you know, the people who are afraid at times like this are people who want to plop themselves down on the couch every night at the same time, watch the same TV shows, live at the same address, never, ever change anything about their lives. Right. Absolutely. And but and just like the guy was saying about how gas was expensive, they put that in the newspaper. Now the gas is not expensive. Is anybody talking about it? Oh yes, yes they are because now the oil companies going to be in trouble compared to their record profits. Uh, the oil companies will still make a profit, but nothing like what they've been making. If the oil goes down to thirty dollars a barrel, that's going to spell trouble for the oil companies. Right. Right. But people, right now in this economy, you have to expand. Go out and buy stocks. Go out and buy houses. Go out and buy. I mean, look, even televisions right now are inexpensive. So then when the economy does start speeding up, you already have everything. Right. No, you if you have, have cash, and you, uh, first of all, I think everybody should pay off their debts and put away enough money for up to 12 months of, of emergency funding, okay? But after that, if you've got cash to spend, this is a great time to have cash, whether you're buying a car, whether you're buying a TV, whatever you're buying. Everything is on sale in a big way. Right, deep, right. Well, deep, I, I deep discounts. You let me get on the soapbox. Can you take me out Kobe Bryant style? I certainly can, Aaron. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beat to my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here comes Robert. Robert, do we have Robert there? There he is. Robert, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey Tom. First time, long t- or long time, first time. How you doing? Yes, I'm doing okay. Hey, um, I wanted to get your advice. Um, I'm 30 and uh, I want to take advantage of the market and uh, buy some uh, property uh, to rent out. Uh, my problem is I don't have a lot of money down. Um, but I do have uh, uh, equity I can tap into. My, my home's almost paid off, like, in 10 years, and uh, my payment's uh, pretty uh, pretty easy, I should say, my monthly mortgage payment. And I uh, wanted to get your take on that. Uh, what would happen if you lost your job? Um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be pretty, but... Um, well, then, then, then I think you have your answer. Okay, but uh, let's say if uh, my job was secure and great what, what would but it's your... but it's not whose job sure. is secure well mine but uh, other than mine who has a secure job right now nah, i hear you i hear you yeah um it for one to be in a position to uh take advantage of the market and uh do something like this mm-hmm. just have tons of money to put down well, now, first of all i would not buy any real estate without substantial equity and i frankly believe with the credit crunch we have right now no one's going to let you buy a house you're not occupying yourself without right. taking a substantial equity stake in it. Right, right. Okay, I see. They're just not going to let you do it. Right. Well, um, I knew you'd give me the right advice. Uh, I love your show, especially when you uh, when you uh, talk about finances. And uh, thank you. Uh, hey, Tom, can you take me out to uh, tribal, tribal style? I certainly can. Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's happening? 
Not much. All uh, right. Listen, I'm calling in order to get the word out. Right now, well, this week, I received a letter in the mail with a $3,500 check. With it, the instructions on the letter tells you to deposit the money into your account. Afterwards, you're supposed to call this number and talk to this one person. And of all things, this man sounds Jamaican or African, I don't know what he is. No. I understand. Yeah, exactly. So, but listen to what I did. I did deposit the check into the, into the account. And that was yesterday. So today the money, the funds were available. And I just wanted to see how far this would go. So I called the guy and he tells me, he's he's telling me what to do now because supposedly I'm going to be a mystery shopper. And I'm supposed to go to a store, buy a hundred dollars worth of whatever I want in the jewelry department. Afterwards, as soon as I'm done there, I'm to go to the Western Union in that establishment and wire, what is it, thirty, almost thirty-two hundred, thirty-one hundred dollars. And and why in the world would you do that? Exactly, that's why I'm not going to do it. But no, I but let me tell you something else. Two things are going to go wrong for you here. One is the guy now has your account number and knows what bank you bank with. Because when that check is cashed, all that information is going to be printed on the back of the check. Oh. You see? I think about that. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, That's number one. And number two, by calling this guy and establishing contact with him, I mean, it it, it complicates things dramatically. You had better call your bank Mm -hmm. and tell them you want to change account numbers, change everything. Okay. Tell them that you uh, were almost the victim of a Nigerian scam because that's what it is. Yeah, but you know, and what I figured, what I what I found out was I looked into it and everything. The company, a company with that name exists, but in Minnesota. Now well, the number that I call, the number that I call is in Canada. Right. And and by the way, do you know there are services right now that are fronts? Uh, they 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 allow you to get a phone number in any country. And it rings to your phone wherever you are. I was not aware of that. Have you ever used one of these internet, uh, like, VoIP services? No, I never have. Yeah, well, you could take your uh, VoIP service, you could take the network adapter and your telephone in your suitcase and plug it in at a hotel where you've got internet service. Yeah. And have local phone service wherever you go. Really? And when people call your number, yeah, when people call your number, they don't know you're in another country. Oh. Oh, well, no, yeah, by the way, you, you're also going to pay probably $35 or more for a bounced check fee. Yeah, exactly. So so, uh, so all of this... I contacted my bank, so what I'm trying to do is I took the money out, but I'm going to put it back in. And just, I'm supposed to call this guy back up tonight after I... You took the wired. money out? Yeah, I took the money out. Just to see if the money would be there, but then I found out that since I I deposited the money through the ATM, the bank let, um, released the money, so I have the money, but the check hasn't cleared to the point where they know whether it's a real one or fake one or anything like that. Right, and they're gonna take that money back out, and then they're gonna charge you a bounced check fee. Exactly. So that's my plan. Is well, was I'm this really and- worth doing? No, I know it's not, which is why I'm not doing anything. Why I'm would just, you think anyone would send you a check and then it would be a real check and that there would be real money? Because, I mean, you think that what you read the letter says and you... you uh, why would you believe that? Because I'm a dumbass. You're a dumbass, that's right. Yeah, exactly. No, but, Nobody sends anybody a check, ever. Uh, ever. That's right, so... Well, lesson learned. Just everybody beware out there. All your listeners, everybody. It could happen to you, and it happened to me. And, you know, I'm supposedly an educated man. <laughs> well, you better make sure your bank uh, changes all your account information because otherwise you are going to be screwed. Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Shorter commercial breaks. We get back to the calls faster. We take more of them than ever before. And we're now on six days a week. Our Saturday show tomorrow from 2 until 6 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. 2 to 6 p.m. tomorrow. 
Hear it online as well at blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button, and there you will be. Rob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you tonight? Doing okay. Hey, I'm calling about, uh, I've been investigating fraud for the last 20 years, and I'm just calling uh, on this whole Nigerian uh, secret shopper uh, fraud. What they what they do is they're they're they want you they're sending you a check for five thousand dollars they want you to call in uh, when you're ready to go and cash the check so they make the funds readily available right away and then once you cash the check which usually Walmart does both procedures so they will always, they'll cash the check they will also Western Union money so their you know their bounce checks would go crazy what they're doing is they're having you illegally cash checks for them that's what the whole scam is. So that's what you would get charged with federally for cashing bad checks. Holy cow, so this guy actually broke the law and didn't even know it. No, that, it's exactly what he just did. He just broke the law by cashing that check. It's a federal offense. Wow. So that, that's what the fraud is. They, they want you to call. They won't make that, that. That check is no good until you call the number that they give you. So once, once you call that money, they, or call that number, they'll make the funds available. Once the funds once the funds are available, they say go ahead and cash the check, and then go secret shopping. They want you to go secret shopping right there at Walmart. So you you go and you you know you, you use fifteen hundred dollars. They say you can keep those goods. Those goods are on us. The rest of the change we need you to wire back to us, which also Walmart offers that that service as well. So Walmart's um, chargebacks were going crazy with with bad checks. Why don't they change their policy? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure they. Ha I'm sure they have now at this point. But that guy can get ch get charged for cashing bad checks, and that's what these guys are doing. They're making other people cash bad checks for them. Wow, that's outrageous. But uh, again, why would anyone think a check was being sent to their home? I have. I don't even know why anybody would. Yeah, exactly. Why would anyone get a check for five thousand dollars to be a secret shopper? It doesn't make but any sense. Because most people are just lazy and greedy, and most people fantasize that this is going to happen one day. That rather than having to put in some hard work or going to school or whatever, that money's going to arrive at your doorstep. Hey, Tom, what's so common about common sense when so many people don't have it? <laughs> You're right about that. Did Thank you, Rob. Uh, Dino's answering machine. Oh yes, Dino's answering machine style. Here you are. Thank you. Here it comes. Dino, you are the biggest hole I've ever met in my entire life. Your like is one on one shit is completely retarded. Okay, you just got lucky, hun. Let me tell you, it will never happen again. You are such a piece of shit. I didn't know what this Tom like is. I'm so cool, and these are my rules. That's such bullshit. Like, I can't believe the crap that you listen to this jackass. <laughs> oh, yeah. One of the all-time favorites. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Anna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Tom. Yes. I'm calling about modifications. I'm a loan counselor for a nonprofit in Los Angeles, and uh, we help people who are in mortgage crisis. And I understand your feelings, and I do agree that a lot of these people got themselves into it. But I also have a lot of um, families who have military families, and when they get back, they don't have employment, and they've looked for modifications as a way to keep their home. Of course, I would say on the average military salary, especially living in California, you have no business buying a home. Well, a lot of them were, you know, assisted with VA loans. And they were kind of pushed into, you know, let's buy a home in the area because you're going to be stationed in this area for the next couple of years. None of them wow. thought that they were going to be out for so long. But what I wanted to say about the modifications, you know, how you had given that statistic that most of them go um, past due. Most again. of them default a second time, yes. Right. What happened, the first modifications that were put out in December of last year um, weren't really modifications. They didn't lower the interest rate. They didn't increase the term. Um, they didn't get out of these adjustable rates. The modification was just, okay, pay, you know, the last two months of payments, and we'll say you're current. So it really didn't change the interest rate or fix it or yeah. um, make it to market. Nice. A lot of these people had 9 to 10% interest rates. I, I don't know why anyone would buy a house with a 9 to 10% interest rate. Oh, well, it, it started with the teaser. Everyone that I saw at the beginning of this year purchased at the beginning of 2006. 
Right, but uh, it starts with a teaser. Do, uh, does nobody ever read those things they're signing? Well, and if they see, don't, why should the rest of us pitch in to help them out? It doesn't make well, any sense. That, that's one thing I did want to mention. Countrywide just settled a lawsuit because a lot of their loans said fixed interest rate, but they weren't. And that's why they settled the lawsuit. Well, Bank of America settled it now, but a lot of them said it's a fixed interest rate, but, you know, didn't give the disclosure that, yeah, it's a fixed interest rate for only the first two years. But if you looked at the paperwork, it said you're getting a fixed interest rate at 7%. Yeah, well, that's another story. If people were defrauded, that's one thing. Yeah. But there, uh, a teaser are... rate is exactly what it says it is. Right. It's but two percent for the first six months, or for the first three years, or whatever, and then it jumps up to whatever it jumps up to. Right. And and uh, you have to look at what it's going to jump up to, not what the rate is today. Of course, and and if they had purchased the right way and gone to the first time home buyer classes, but I did want to mention to your callers, if they're going to agencies that are charging them, that's fraudulent. Nobody should be charging them to help them with their loans. If they're a HUD approved agency, it should be done for free. Well, uh, thank you for that information. We can't get enough information. You know, it's uh, just the way it is. Uh, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you, sir? Great. I was reading an article yesterday on Forbes.com about the evaluation of currencies, uh, how they're planning on evaluating all the currencies throughout the world. And even though I read the article two times, I just couldn't grasp it. Can you give me some more insight into that matter? Well, uh, the value of currency has to do primarily with two things. One is uh, how many of the units are out there in circulation. If you increase liquidity and you uh, pump out more uh, of your basic monetary unit, each one that everybody has is worth less. Okay. Uh, if uh, liquidity is short, if credit is hard to get, if interest rates are high, that generally pushes up the value of a, cur of a currency. It also has to do with what uh, your currency is worth versus other currencies in the world. How would, how would they make it so it's on an even playing ground? If they did it throughout the world, how could they get it so it's like a, even all throughout? I don't understand that part. Well, it's not even all throughout. And, in fact, uh, what a currency is worth versus another world currency has to do with foreign exchange. It has to do with uh, how much are people paying to get euros how, or, or yen or British pounds. Okay, so what is, what is, when they use the word demonetizing the currency, does that mean digitally taking the money out of your account when they use the word demonetize? I don't know that word, and I've never seen it before. So it's probably unique to that particular article you read. Uh, or it's a term that, uh, despite as much as I read, maybe it's just one I've never noticed before, but I've never seen it. Yeah, because if, suppose the other currencies have been demonetized, like I know Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, their currencies have been demonetized. Will they digitally do it? So, as far as I know, the United States, since the inception of the money here, we have never uh, uh, demonetized the money in the United States so far. Right. Well, I know Argentina had a real disaster uh, about five or six years ago, more like seven years ago now, uh, when when their peso had been, uh, it was one peso to the dollar. One peso equaled one dollar. And to hear everybody in Argentina tell it, their peso was never worth a dollar, but there was just some uh, arbitrary decision made by the government. And so people lived and had a party. And one day they had to pay for the party, and so the president at the time in 2001 uh, woke up one morning and announced uh, that one peso equals 25 American cents. Right. And so suddenly the money you thought you, you, thought you had 10,000 American dollars, suddenly you had 2,500. So if that's the case, and they do that in the United States, wouldn't it be better you know, if you have money in the bank to take the money out of the bank? Because one day your $10,000 could be worth two grand or five grand. Wouldn't it be a well, good idea? Well, that is only if they, they pulled a stunt like they pulled in Argentina. Uh, I tell you what, if they pulled a stunt like that, I think you'd finally have the second American Revolution. Right, right. I hear what you're saying. That makes sense. Oh, yeah, by the way, time. in Argentina, old people were setting themselves on fire in the uh -huh. lobbies of banks. Right. Because they suddenly realized that everything they worked for was wiped. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that with all the all the money they're printing, it's going to cause a lot of inflation, like six to eighteen months down the road? Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, yeah. No doubt about it. In my mind, uh, mm -hmm. they're going to have to at some point dramatically raise interest rates, 
Mm-hmm. And that's going to slow down any economic recovery. This is quite the balancing act for Ben Bernanke and the Federal Reserve. Mm-hmm. And uh, one wonders how they're going to pull that off. Uh, because yeah. uh, you know, we're going to have a, a, over a trillion-dollar budget deficit this year. Do you think because of the inflation rates going to be going up, do you think, do you think it would be a good idea to invest in gold? Because gold's supposed to hold its value when, when, the, when, the, when the dollar deflates. Well, you know, gold has been unpredictable and in some way has become detached from its usual, uh, uh, the, the usual valuations. Uh, what I would do, what I do in my own portfolio is I, I hold a portion, about 5% of it, uh, in precious metals, uh, in a precious metals mutual fund. Which includes the basic precious metals like gold, but it also includes companies that mine gold, companies that mine silver, copper, platinum, and what have. And is that your is that, that what you, is that what you use as a hedge, basically the five percent? I do, I do, and it uh, you know it uh, obviously it uh, bolsters your uh, uh, it, it can bolster your portfolio when stocks are down. Right now, everything is down because the demand for commodities at the bottom has fallen out. Right, uh, right. But ultimately, it should be part of your portfolio. But I would not throw all your money into gold, ever. You're better off putting it in your uh, pillowcase uh, rather than to throw all your money in because gold can be very erratic. Right, I understand. Okay, I, I appreciate you answering my questions. Not a problem at all. Thank you very much for the call. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Don't forget, we're now six days a week. Six days a week. Tune in tomorrow from 2 to 6 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk for our Saturday program, six days a week. If you don't live here in SoCal, all you need to do is go to blowmeuptom.com, click on the Listen Live button between 2 and 6 Pacific Time, and there will be 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. It's Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, sir? Pretty good. Very glad to hear that. Well, I'm calling. I wanted to talk to you about the Blackberry Storm. I'm sure you heard of it. They've marketed the crap out of it. Pretty much, it's very strange because I have this phone. I got it the first day it came out, and random people, anybody who sees that I have this phone, for instance, I was at the courthouse, and some lady saw that I had this phone. She went out of her way to pull it at the bottom out of of her purse and say, look, I have this phone, too. Isn't it wonderful? You know, it seems that people think by having this new storm that I don't know if they're better than people, whatever they're thinking. The fact is, it's not even that good of a phone. What is it you don't like about it? I mean, it's got simple bugs that things that even a Nokia, a free phone you would get, wouldn't have. You know, I mean, it does a lot of good things, but the fact is that the iPhone does better things. The only reason I got this phone is because I assumed, you know, I work in different businesses. And Well, you may recall think- the original iPhone had bugs, too. And uh, people like you who light up outside the store at midnight to buy telephones, uh, this is what happens to you. Um, I'm sh- I'm a BlackBerry fanatic. I'm sitting here looking at my BlackBerry right now, and um, I personally would uh, would not ever wait in line to get one of these phones. I I like to let the bug shake out first. That's my mistake. I shouldn't have made. You know, the the thing is, it does do what it needs to do. Unfortunately, my friend was the district manager of the Verizon I went to, so I didn't have to wait in line. He kept one for me. But the fact is, you know, I'm pretty much, I made myself the guinea pig of this, and I know people have, you know, all these people got it. They're going through the same things I am, and it's so strange how people think that it's so amazing, you know? Well, again, I mean, it looks amazing, and when they uh, finally have that uh, firmware fix, whatever it needs, uh, when they uh, give you that download that will resolve the problems, I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. I, I swear by my BlackBerry, and I'm sure the BlackBerry Storm is going to be fantastic too, but electronic gadgets, when you buy them the first day they come out, in my view, invariably have some kind of bug or some kind of shortcoming. Yeah, you're right about that. What's the, the you- rush? You're right about that. You know, they have wireless upgrades for this. Once every two weeks you check on your phone, and I mean... 
every upgrade I get, it is getting better, but it's not even the phone problems I'm talking about because I agree with you, this phone is going to be amazing when it's at its peak. But it's just so strange to me that random people, it's happened to me three times already, and the phone hasn't even been out a month. And, like, three times already, random people, they see I have the phone, and they feel that they have to show me that they have the same phone. Right, but that's because all you morons went and waited in line to buy. Or, yeah. in your case, I uh, you know, called uh, in a favor from a friend. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, know you know, you're, you're, that's wrong. insane. I would never buy the 1.0 of anything. Yeah, you're right. I, I guess you get burned once, right? Well, I've been burned with computers and other gadgets. Uh, for doing the exact same thing, so I'll never do it again. Tom, I was going to ask you also, what is it about, why is it that you guys are having shorter commercial breaks? Do you think it's the economy, people can't afford to pay for commercial time right no, now? No, no, actually, if you count, we have more breaks, but they're shorter. Oh, is that what it is? That's what it is. Well, I was going to tell you, Tom, I really appreciate everything you do, and I have a 14-year-old sister who, I mean, I wouldn't want her listening to this now, but one day I was listening, I didn't want to turn it off because she was in the car, and actually, it was a guy talking about how he wanted to have a child. He was 19, and he was saying he wanted to be an architect. And right when my sister was listening, he was saying, study, keep on it, you know. And anybody who's doubted you, any of my friends that say, oh, this guy, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about, once they listen to you, I mean, you really talk sense. And whoever's not listening and thinking that you're saying stupid things is just, they need to open their ears a bit. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. But what can I say? It's just me. Thanks very much for the call. I appreciate it. Um, I don't know if we have enough time for any of these calls, so I'm not going to take any of these calls. I'm going to tell you that, uh, of course, uh, you hear us now on Saturdays. We're now on six days a week. Hear our Saturday show from 2 until 6 p.m. tomorrow on 97.1 FM Talk. And then, of course, on Monday again, the usual time. That's the deal. And, of course, if you don't live in SoCal, go to blowmeuptom.com and click on the Listen Live button. And you'll be in the know like everybody else. That's the bottom line. One of our longtime competitors, Larry Elder, is leaving the air. Larry's always been a nice guy to me. And I wish him the best of luck. Larry Elder, after 14 years on the air. Goodbye, Larry. It's the Tom Likas Show.